Greetings, hello everybody. I have a big special announcement. It's not that I've turned a, into a professional juggler, because clearly I haven't. No, the Crooked Crown is being launched at the UK Games Expo. It's a game that Kedrick Winks, no, that's my name, <laughs> Kedrick Winks and Ken Boyter have designed and developed together. And it is coming to the UK Games on the 31st of May, the 1st of June, and the 2nd of June. <laughs> Just thought I'd say June twice. And that is up at the NEC in Birmingham. If you've never been before, and you love card games, you love board games, you're gonna love this. It is just hundreds and hundreds of stalls, all with games, old games, new games, different types of games. It's a fantastic place to be. It takes place over three days. There's, honestly, you'll be gamed out by the end of it. There's so much to see, there's so much to do. It's not just necessarily about buying games. There's areas to play games, there's areas to demo games. There's game competitions. There's also live shows that's you know normally got a gaming theme. So there's lots more to do than just buy the games and walk around the stalls, although that is a big part of it. And I am gonna be demoing, and so is Kedrick, The Crooked Crown. What is The Crooked Crown? Well, it's published by Outset. There's their logo. And also Cheatwell. There's their logo. And it's a card game that we're very, very proud of. That is the big news. We've got a game that is being published. Very, very excited about it. And as you can see, you're probably wondering why I'm wearing the jester. It, you've cottoned on now. The Crooked Crown. It is a game. It's a card game for three to six players. And it's all about bluff, sabotage, and being the one who has the crooked crown card at the end of the game. That is it, it says, steal the crown, win the game. I'll read you the blurb on the back, shall I? The crooked crown, steal the crown, win the game. The goblin king is dead. Oh no. <laughs> and the crooked crown is up for grabs, hooray. Will your diabolical deeds help you claim the crown for yourself? Use your card abilities to spy on or steal from other players. Once you have the crown, cast suspicions on others and bluff your way to victory. If you still have the crown in your grubby little hands at the end of the game, you are the rightful ruler of all the goblins. Hooray! It's a game of bluff, tension and treachery for three to six mischievous goblins. And we're very, very proud of it. It's taken us a number of years to kind of develop this and we had so much fun in developing it, um, it's it's hard work. I don't know if anyone's developed a game or written a you know a novel or written a musical or anything like that. And they've started from nothing and they've worked through it. It's gone through very many iterations, and finally, you know, to actually have a publisher or well, two publishers that are interested in publishing it is just a, a wonderful, wonderful feeling. So, but it's only kind of half the journey because the next half is obviously getting word out and you know telling people about the game so as i say kedrick and i are going to be demoing the game i'll just show you some of the components what i've been blown away by the quality I'm, i know i know i'm going to be biased in everything i say obviously but this is true i mean if those of you that see my youtube channel the bottled imp that i do with well I'm sort of doing it don't really do it anymore but anyway the bottled imp youtube channel with kedrick uh, not kedrick with julian I've done loads and loads of board game reviews on that channel. And so I kind of know a bit about board games. And one of the big things that you look for, apart from the gameplay, apart from you know the immersive experience, apart from did you enjoy it, all of that, is the components and the quality of the production. And I must admit, it's solid. It's, we're really, really proud of it. I mean, they've done little details like that. They've put that spot UV is it spot UV? Yeah, on it where it's like little shiny in areas, but not in all the areas. So in the lettering, it's there. You've got the each character on the box has got their little shiny bits, so to speak. <laughs> um, so we're really happy with it. And the box has that really nice sort of weave. It's got that texture to it. Anyway, <laughs> sound like a weirdo now. So I'm just going to go show you the components again. Beautifully made, Quali quality components. That is the board. It's a card game, but there is a little board just to help you keep track of the cards and how many rounds uh, is, you know, what round you're on. So there's eight rounds to the game. So 
we have a very, very beautiful illustrated rule book. Very simple game to pick up and learn. However, there is quite a lot, well, not a lot, but it's, it's a lightweight game. It takes about 20 minutes to play, 25 minutes to play. And, but it's still good, good amount of strategy in there. And the nice thing about it, it plays differently every time. So the replayability is fantastic. So we've got a lovely rule book there. And again, that makes a big difference. You know, we had a lot of conversation about the wording, <laughs> you know, cause you think things are clear when you go through it. Um, but then someone looks at it and goes, so you mean I do that? And you go, oh no, 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 I can, oh, I see why you think that now, but right, we'll have to iron out that bit. So we spent a lot of time on the rules. And I just want to say again with the production value, this is the inside of the box. They didn't need to put all that lovely artwork on there, but they did. Just adds to the atmosphere and the immersiveness. This is also the inner of the box. And again, they've got little illustrated bits on the cardboard. Just want to take out the cards. So you've got the cards deck here. And then there's that little bit of illustration there. Now this is just a bit of cardboard that holds the rest of the cards up. But if you take it out, look what's underneath it. It's that image, but without the crown. So again, it's just that little detail to the production value that I find you think, yeah, okay, it just feels like a quality product. So you have 78 cards in the deck and I'll just quickly go through what the cards do. There are two crooked crowns. One is a spare. You will be playing with one crooked crown. This is the crown that everybody wants. So every game you have one crooked crown. You deal five cards minus one to every player. So say it's a four player game, you'll be dealing 19, you take out, you shuffle the deck, you take out 19 cards, you put that card into the 19, then you shuffle them all out and then you deal five each to those four players. Obviously if it's a six player, you do the same, but you do for five cards each. Does that make sense? Anyway, so there you go. Look at the art, they're goblins. Oh yeah, each character, each player is a goblin. And that's what I'm saying, you're the goblin ruler, you want, a, you want the crown. So that is the card that everybody's going for. Really expressive uh, characters. The artwork is by a fantastic artist called Alberto, and I never remember his surname, Alberto Sanchez Ballesteros. He's, um, I thought he's Italian, but that sounds Spanish. Uh, and so Kedrick and I had the pleasure of kind of working with him and guiding him through, you know, what we wanted. Can, you know, we did ask for a few changes here and there. He was fantastic to work with. I can't recommend him highly enough. So if there are any game designers out there or publishers that are watching this, there probably isn't. But if there is, and you are looking for an artist, Alberto is a dream to work for. He's really up for changes. And you know, as long as you don't take the mickey out of him, you know, he's up for changes, very easy. He does understand what you want fairly quickly. Um, and we just really liked his style and we thought it fitted the character of the game. And the art, you know, choosing the right artwork helps, you know, with your theme and getting immersed into the into the um, into the game. So let me go through a few cards. We'll start with the spy card. As I say, you each get five. Um, you each get five cards, and this is denoted. You each pick your player. So there's got some fantastic goblins, and you will all start by putting your figures on the number five, because you start with five. If, however, you have to lose a card or X amount of cards, you go down to four, three, two cards. You can go to a maximum of seven, so your hand will increase and decrease throughout the game. Let me just show you the figures, actually. We've got the rogue, we've got the noble. So these are to represent different strands of society within the goblin world. We've got the cook, We've got the Jester, obviously. I think he's gonna be people's favorites, <laughs> I'm not sure. Although people do seem to like a good rogue, don't they? We've got the Wizard and we've got the Knight. And again, really expressive, really fun little characters. And we've also got the Crooked Crown token. And this simply denotes what round you're in. So over the course of eight rounds, the game plays. Now a round is when everybody has taken their turn. When everybody's taken their turn, you just move it to the second one, the second, third step, the fourth step, etc., etc. When you get to eight, everybody's got one more go, then that is the end of the game. And whoever has the crown at the end of the eighth round is the winner. Hurrah! 
However, how do you get the crown if you weren't dealt the, dealt the crown? Now this is where the strategy comes in, it's really fun. Because if you, <coughs> oh, got a little bit of a cough there. If you, I always find it, it's kind of more nerve wracking. If you've got the crown right at the beginning, if you're dealt with the crown, you've got to work out a strategy of how to survive eight rounds without someone stealing the crown off of you. Now, the way to do it is to try and get more cards into your hand. So you would try to have seven cards in your hand because if somebody can steal a card, then you wanna be able to raise the odds in your favor. However, if you get your cards taken away and you're down to two cards, obviously it's 50-50. And if somebody uh, plays two steal cards, they could take both cards. So you do want as many hand, uh, cards in your hands. Equally, if you haven't got the cards at the beginning, you need to find out who has. So the way that you do it is, you would be searching. You've got a spy card, and if you play one of those, so on your turn, you basically play one of these cards, or multiples of the same type. So if I, I could play two, three, four, of the same type or however many you've got. Now, the spy means I can look at one other person's uh, hand. So if I play one of those, I could look at one other person's hand. If I play two of them, I can look at two people's hands. If I play three, I can look at three, etc., etc. Obviously, if you're playing a four player game, you can play five of these if you want to but you wouldn't get the effect of the last one because there, wasn't, there isn't a fifth person to, to look at. But it does mean you can get rid of that card to be able to draw back up and get a new card, which might be more beneficial to you. So that is what you do. So you play a card and then you draw back up to where your figure is. So again, as we say, if we started on five, if I played one card, I'd draw one card back up. If, however, I play a steel card, because I might on my next go have worked out, oh, okay, I'm pretty sure so and so that player's got it. I'm gonna play a steal card. And when you play a steal card, you can steal one card at random so they can mix up their hand, they don't show you what, what you know, the, they show the backs to you. You then take a card. Now you may be lucky and get the crown, but of course it's a game of bluff. So you don't wanna go, yes. You just wanna go, hmm, okay, yeah. <laughs> or however you wanna play it. You could go, yes. You could say, oh, damn, I didn't get it when you did get it. You know, do you see what I mean? It's a game of bluff. So with the steal, you do, that's what I'm saying. If you play two steals, three steals, then you can split the steals. You can either steal three cards from one player, or you can play two cards, steal two cards from one and one from one, or you can play steal from each, play, each other player. Yeah? If you've got three four, five cards, six cards. So that's what I mean by if you have the crown, <laughs> let's say I had the crown and I, and I was down to two cards and someone played two steel cards on me, they would steal both of those and I would lose the crown. But at least I would know who has it because they've just stolen it from me. Then the person that steals, they don't draw back up from the draw deck because they've stolen the cards into their hand and that replenishes their hand. So say they were on five and they played two steel cards, they would be getting two steel cards from other players, they'd be back up to five. If, however, the person gets stolen from and I was on five and I had two cards stolen, I would immediately draw back up to my five. If I play a card I and it's not a steal, I would immediately draw back up to whatever my figure is on, whichever my goblin is on. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. It's all very well explained in the rule book. So those, that's the uh, spy and the steel card. Then we have um, the ambush card. So say you think, okay, I know who's got it, but I want to whittle their hand down on the, you know, for my next go, because then I'm, I've got more chance of stealing that card off of them if they've got a smaller hand. So you ambush them. And again, you can play two, three, four, five, six of these, however many you've got in your hand. And you can, again, split them. You could say, right, I want two people. If So if I laid three of these, I could say, right, I want every one to go down one on the track. So say you start on five, everybody apart from you would go down to four. 
that means they have to discard a card. They can't use its ability because they're discarding it. And they're only allowed to have four cards unless that gets changed. Okay. So someone else then might put one down to three, one down to two. Or from five, you might have somebody ambush you in one go, three cards, one, two, three. Now you can never go below two cards and you can never go above seven cards. So hopefully again that makes sense. So that's the ambush card. So you so you don't want these played on you basically. However, if you do get ambushed or you just want to increase your starting cards of five, you play a tasty pie card and you play this on yourself. And again, you can play multiples of this card, you know, of the card and have the same effect, but you can't split it between the players. The tasty pie card is just for you. And as you're a goblin, it's obviously full of maggots and mouldy stuff. That's tasty to goblins, trust me. I spent a lot of time with goblins. So you would play one, two, three of those, and then you would move up your, your goblin on the track. So say I, play, I was on five and I played two tasty pie cards, I'd move it up to seven. Then I would draw back up to seven immediately. And that'd be the end of my go, and then it's someone else. Now, now you might do that, and in the very next go, somebody might sabotage you too, and you're back down to five. You just don't know. You might not, and that might not happen to you, it might happen to you. And that's where the fun comes in, because you go, oh, I've just done that, how dare you? Right, I'll get your next go. So you, again, there can be a bit of sabotage, a bit of back and forth. So that is the Tasty Pie card. And we also have, we've got, uh, I think there's just one other card. What have we done? We've got the spy. Yeah, we've done the spy. We've done the steel. We've done the ambush. And we've done the tasty pie. Now, those are the four main core cards, if you like. Then we have the, if I can find it, yeah, we have the wild card, <laughs> which is a, a goblin in a dinosaur suit, disguised. Now, this card is pretty powerful. There's only, how many of these are in them? Four, there's only four in the deck. So they might not all come out. They might come out, they might not come out. There's only four of these in the deck, but these are wild. So these mimic all the other cards except the Crooked Crown card. So if you wanted to heal, heal yourself back up or gain, you know, gain cards, you could play that with that. You could say, right, I'm going to heal two. I'm going to gain two more cards. I'm going to move my token two places up the track. Because that is wild. That's now a tasty pie card. You can play that on its own and choose whatever it is. But you can't, um, you can't play multiples of these and do different things. You have to just do one action. So I could have two wild cards and they could be two steel cards or they could be two say, uh, tasty pie cards or whatever. Do you see what I mean? So that, they're very powerful. That's why there's only four. Now we have, we did spend a lot of time play testing this, so we have got a balanced game. There's 23 ambush cards, there's 14 tasty pie cards, there's 14 spy cards, and there's 21 steel cards and four wild cards. And that is <laughs> the game. And it is a lot of fun, trust me. I've, we've played it so many times and I've played it with lots of different people and every single one that's played it has really, really enjoyed it. It's quick, it's fun, it is easy to learn. Once you get the hang of it, like anything, you know, that first round you're going, well, I don't quite know what to do. But then once you get it, you get it. And then you, there is the strategy because you've got the bluffing aspect. Some people are rubbish at bluffing, some people are very good at bluffing. Plus also... You've got the, well, really, should I keep, should I go early and steal the crown early because I know where it is before it gets lost? Or should I save my steel cards because then I know I can try and have a go on the latter round of stealing it? You know, just randomly. Because if I get, if I lose track of where it is, I can still steal, but, you know, your odds are lower because you might not be stealing them from the right person. So there's still a lot of strategy to, to come into play as well. And as I say, every game's different, every game's fun, um, and, it, and, it, and it normally, and the, the tension that you feel is brilliant because, you know, the first round you go, yeah, you know, it feels like you've got ages, and then as it goes up, round five, and you go, well, I kind of know that person's got it, but I haven't got any steel cards. 
right, I better do this. I'm going to whittle their hand around. And then someone else will steal from them, and you think, right, they stole two cards out of their five. The odds are still with that person having it, but that other person might have had it. Right, so now there's two people that I know potentially have got it. And then someone else might steal from them. So you kind of go, okay, so now three people... Right, I'm back to square one. <laughs> so that's why the spy cards are still important, you know, near the latter end of the game, because you still might lose track of it. So it feels like it's an easy game to win, but trust me, <laughs> it really isn't. And one of the best feelings there's I've found anyway is if you have it right from the beginning and you manage to hold on to it, I've I've had it where two or three rounds I've had a 50-50 chance of losing it because they've whittled me down to two and every single time they've taken the wrong one. <laughs> and it's such a good feeling and you win the game. The other good feeling is if you do manage to steal it on the last round as well. Because again, you don't quite know how long they've had it for. So they're thinking, right, I've only got to survive one more round with it. And then you just happen to steal it on the last round because you've whittled it down. You kind of know they've got it and you, you manage to get it. That is a great feeling. It's a really good game. It's a really good fun game. So as I say, Kedrick Winks and myself, we're going to be at the UK Games Expo, which is on the 31st of May, 1st of June and the 2nd of June at the NEC in Birmingham. We hope to see you there. We will love to give you a demo of the game. Come along, you can play it. It's going to be a lot of, lot of fun. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Mythics. You'll be seeing a lot more of this. I will be, you know, sort of spamming everything. <laughs> no, go out to your friends. Cookie Crown. It's a lot of fun. Take care. And may the magic of gaming flow through you always.